Hey there, welcome to part 37 of the Amateur Extra License Exam Study. That's element four. It's the mountaintop of tests for us amateurs. And we're on sub element seven, hotel. This section, sub element seven, has been a freaking doozy up to this point. We're near the end of this one. Then we can go find something else to get into. So question number one, we're talking about oscillator circuits. And the three common oscillator circuits are coal pits. Oh, look, that's me. Hartley and Pierce. Coal pits, Hartley and Pierce are the three common oscillator circuits. And you're going to get it see two of them in just a minute. What is a microphonic? Now, microphonic. If you have an old guitar amp sitting around and you go tap on it and it has a reverb tank in it, that's sort of like being microphonic. It goes clank, 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 because the vibrations are causing an oscillation. So changes in oscillator frequency caused by mechanical vibration. You do not want that in an oscillator. What is phase lock loop? PLL. For short. So phase lock loop is an electronic servo loop consisting of a phase detector, a low pass filter, a voltage controlled oscillator or a VCO, and a stable reference oscillator. And here at Analog, this is two different PLL uh, configurations, and you can see most of what was mentioned is there. So these are wonderful. They're, they're in a package format. A PLL is um, very easy to construct using a, a pretty much just the data sheet from these guys. So that they, they can tell you how to make them and what to do and all kinds of cool stuff if you want to make a phase lock loop. Alrighty, so let's continue on. How is positive feedback supplied in a coal pits oscillator? That is through a capacitive divider. So this is the capacitive divider right here. And that it's a tank circuit. And so you can see that right here. It is through capacitors in the tank circuit. Or <laughs> talk about tanks. How is positive feedback supplied in a Pierce oscillator? Well, that's through a quartz crystal. And this is a Pierce oscillator. I have used one of these before when I built a digital clock. So the crystal had two capacitors that were uh, put on the legs of it, and that was to keep the uh, frequency stable. And that was based on what the data sheet called for. Which of these functions can be, for, be performed by a phase lock loop? And that's going to be frequency synthesis, so creating some frequency, and FM demodulation. So the phase lock loop is good for those two things. How can an oscillator's microphonic responses be reduced? And that is to mechanically isolate the oscillator circuitry from the enclosure. There's multiple ways to do that, but you want to mechanically isolate it from its enclosure so that if the enclosure gets bumped, you don't get those microphonic responses. I have a particular radio that was built by somebody else. I blew it up, took it apart, fixed it. But you can tap on it and you can see the frequency oscillate. That's why I don't play with it. But uh, it's a, it, microphonics are a bad thing. Which of the following components can be used to reduce thermal drift in crystal oscillators? Now remember, we just talked about this crystal oscillator has two capacitors. You don't want temperature to affect these bad, bad old boys here. So NP0 capacitors, that's a negative positive zero capacitor. And they're also known as C0G if you were to go actually shop for them. But the dielectric is the NP0, negative positive zero. They have the least thermal drift out of any capacitor. And listen, they're no more expensive than a regular one. What type of frequency synthesizer use, circuit uses a phase accumulator lookup table, digital to analog converter, 
and a low pass anti alias filter. That is direct digital synthesizer. So direct digital is the giveaway. Digital to make it has to have a lookup table. So these digital synthesizers have basically an Excel spreadsheet that for every part of a sine wave, it has the voltage that it needs to output. So that is a direct digital synthesizer. I think I have that from analog too. Look, it's in chip format. And it is a great way to go from less than a hertz up to 400 megahertz based on a one gigahertz clock. So this right here is a DDS and it has memory on the inside and a lookup table and all that jazz to make different forms of waves. Really neat stuff and it's all done digitally. What information is contained in the lookup table for a direct digital synthesizer? Oh no, I just said that. Amplitude values that represent the desired waveform. And you can see that it has a lookup table for a square wave, a triangle wave, and a sine wave. Those are the three most popular ones. What are the major spectral impurity? Oh man, what are the major spectral impurity components of direct digital synthesizers? Those are spurious signals at discrete frequencies. That's why you need a filter on these guys on the output. Spurious signals, noise. You don't want that. You don't want spurious signals. That becomes harmonics, which becomes and interference to something else, but spurious signals at discrete frequencies. This, we just talked about this one too, which of the following ensures that a crystal oscillator operates on the frequency specified by the crystal manufacturer, and that is to provide the crystal with a specified parallel capacitance. And if we go back and look, this is your parallel capacitance right here. And you'll use your negative positive zero capacitor so that you don't get frequency drift when it gets warm or minimal, that is. And the last question, which of the following is a technique for providing highly accurate and stable oscillators needed for microwave transmission and reception? We're talking about microwave, so way up there in the frequency range. All of these choices are correct. You can G use a GPS signal reference. You can use a rubidium stabilized reference oscillator. Or you can use a temperature controlled high Q dielectric resonator. All of these choices are correct. Alrighty. Well, we've gotten through that one. I hope it wasn't too bad. Memorizing those answers, uh, there's quite a few that you just have to memorize, so go over them as much as you can so that you'll know them. Remember, you only get one from that section. You could get lucky or you could not get lucky. Make my day. <laughs> I'm W1RCP. Hope these are enjoyable. Hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel to show support, and you don't have to click the bell. You can put the slash through the bell, but it shows support for my channel, and it won't bother you a bit. 73.